And now, for the next 30 minutes, as the prop turns. Brought to you today by Ranger Tugs and Cutwater Boats. Quality cruising and real community. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the seventh installment of As the Prop Turns. And today on the webinar, we have Jeff Mesmer, our Vice President of Ranger Tugs and Cutwater Boats. Morning. We have Andrew Custis, the General Manager. Morning. We have Kenny Mars, a Customer Service Manager. Morning, guys. Brian Decott, a Marketing Associate. Good morning. And myself, Sam Bissett. Real quick before we get started, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, you can type them there and we'll do our best to answer as we go. Uh, we'll also be posting the uh, entire list of questions and answers after the webinar. So you'll get an email in a day or two with a link to the YouTube video of this webinar and all the questions and answers and the PowerPoint presentation. So you'll see that very shortly. Um, other than that, if we do run into any technical difficulties and the meeting shuts down, check your email, we'll send you a new link and we'll pick up where we left off. And with that, I'm gonna send it to Jeff. Good morning, welcome. Uh, we're about, I guess, nine weeks into our uh, reopening. Just wanted to give you a quick State of the Union uh, the factories are all uh, working nicely. You know, we are at home uh, today, so we aren't wearing our masks, but normally we'd have our, our masks on in the work environment. And uh, uh, anything to add to that, Kenny or Andrew, just want people to know that we're, we're working hard. It's a little bit more cumbersome today with some of the things we're working around, but we're keeping everybody safe. Yeah, I think I would just say thanks for everybody that has boats on order. You know, normally we're doing factory tours and, you know, a lot of that stuff, a little bit more personal touch, but uh, we've been able to manage that with deliveries and, you know, we're, we're still, you know, delivering four or five boats a week and people are having a blast and things are going good. So. What about uh, parts department? What's our, uh, I know we've, we've had that shut down for a bit and, where are we at yeah. with that? We decided to shut it down forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, we, we actually, um, we hired a, a new guy who is very, very educated. Um, and he's, you know, he's kind of a, he's a very, you know, universal type of guy, but he, he starts on Monday and we're kind of revamping the whole parts department, but the biggest trouble is has been getting enough inventory. We've been uh, selling parts and getting parts and referring people to different places, but uh, we're going to be full up and running, not this Monday, but next Monday, we're going to use the week to get him trained up and make sure he can, you know, help and do it. And, but it'll be, we're, we're back and rolling on that here very soon. All right. Sam, you ready for me to take uh, take over here? Yep. All right. So, all right. So one thing we focus a lot of our, our two days of training on is um, is the boat handling side of things. Um, that that's definitely the most stressful part of, of boating is the the tight quarters. So we're we're gonna kind of go through some tips and tricks today. Um, you know, just securing lines, securing fenders, coming in and out, and, and different approaches because that's that's where a lot of the uh, anxiety comes in is uh, is when you have other boats moving around you in tight proximity and, you know, coming in and out of, out of slip. So to kind of start off here, we have, we have five tips. Um, the biggest thing is just to be patient. Um, I, I know, especially after cruising for a few hours, you come in, you're kind of just anxious, you're ready to, to get the boat to the dock and tie it off. Um, the biggest thing is just to go slow. Uh, you, you don't want to come in too fast. Uh, you know, the, the biggest difference from, from boating 
to say, you know, driving your car is you don't have brakes, you don't have traction, so you can't just come up, stop somewhere and call it good. So you kind of have to use that momentum in your favor and, and adjust as you come in. So we're going to go through a few different kind of scenarios today of, of coming into the dock, but then also uh, pulling away from the dock and getting underway. So you do want to kind of plan your approach, plan, you know, who's doing what as, uh, as you're coming and going. But um, the biggest thing is, is just to be patient, take it slow, and, uh, and don't be afraid to, to reset and, and come in again if you have to. So, you know, just the basics at the helm right here is you have your wheel, your throttle, and your thrusters. So one thing I know a lot of us like to do is we have a, a steering knob. So this is the one we've put on our boats before. Um, but just to have a knob on the steering wheel. And, and that is really for, um, you know, when you're docking, you're doing a lot of turns with the wheel. So having that knob makes it a heck of a lot easier versus doing kind of like what I call the hand shelf of where you're just going side to side with the wheel. This, this allows you to kind of do full revolutions a lot quicker uh, as I'm approaching the dock. So what I try to do is when I'm coming in, just use my left hand for the steering wheel and then my right hand I keep for the throttle and the thrusters. And we're gonna go into a lot more of that as we go through the slides. But I think rather, you know, if you have a, an inboard uh, or an outboard, uh, that knob I think makes a big difference coming in and out, just to have something to kind of grab onto and, and, uh, and make those turns. So here, um, you, you know, what we're gonna have is, it's just basic maneuvering. So again, not having traction, um, you know, the boat's gonna handle a little differently than say uh, your car would on the road. So as we steer, um, you can kind of see highlighted is that, that pivot point. So as we're making our turns, as we're going forward, uh, you know, it's kind of important. And one thing we talk about a lot is anticipating your turn. You kind of want to anticipate, get the wheel set up and then go into gear especially when you're in a tighter area. You don't want to chew up all that space by going forward and then turning. You kind of want to go right into that turn. So it's good to kind of have that uh, and, and know to how your boat reacts, um, you know, kind of based on the size you have. Um, all of our boats are going to handle differently. Uh, and especially as you know, if you've, you know, started out on the smaller end of the spectrum and traded up and, and gone bigger, um, you, you've noticed that during training of they all handle a little differently. So, so practice is something that's really good um, to do, you know, as you're, uh, as you're getting familiar with the boat. Uh, one thing too, and this is, you know, whether I'm coming or going, um, it's always good to know my rudder position or, or my motor position. On the outboards, it is a little bit easier at times just to see where that motor is. But, you know, if you have people back there or if it's blocked, you can't always, you know, rely on always looking back at the motor. So on our boats, like say, for example, um, you know, we're on, a, on an inboard here, but uh, you want to know where your rudder is. We're getting ready to leave the dock. Um, I, I want to know where that rudder is. So if I go into gear, I know what the boat's going to do. So if my lock to lock is five full rotations from hard over, say to port, to hard over to starboard. Um, you know, I wanna do one, just pick a side, go, go hard over that direction, and then count in your head two and a half turns back. That way you have a starting point to know where, where your rudder is. Um, I, I, I wanna be sure as I leave the dock to not go into gear, but then drive right into the dock or, or, or pull away when I'm not ready. So having my left hand designated for just that steering wheel will make it a lot easier as I'm approaching or pulling away to then do quicker turns, but then also count and maintain um, kind of where that rudder is. I, I know some people like to put a rudder indicator, which I've never really been a fan of just because I don't want to be looking down at gauges. I want to be looking out the window, looking behind me, you know, seeing if there's other boats there um, rather than looking down at gauges. So this is a simple solution as far as just to kind of maintain and know where the rudder is as I'm coming, uh, coming in and out of gear here. 
And then we have a uh, outboard illustration here. So this is gonna show us uh, our direction. So if we're steering, say to the left, you know, boat's gonna come over to the left, but this is also showing us our thrust. So this, uh, you know, illustration on an outboard, we can see we're driving straight forward here. The, the thrust is coming directly behind the boat. Um, and then same thing if we were steering off to the right, you would see that, that thrust and, and the boat would be uh, steering to the right. Now in reverse, and this is the, the biggest difference between an outboard uh, versus an inboard is you will have steerage in reverse on an outboard. So for this example, you can see the boat is in reverse. We have the wheel cranked all the way to the left and you can see our direction of travel is going this way. The stern is going to be swinging back and around. But then this um, this picture will also show the thrust. This is the the water pushing this way and moving that boat to the side. And we can also see that here illustrated on this side. So a little bit different than say inboard is. But um, you know the biggest thing again is making sure you're kind of counting those turns as you're coming into the dock. But uh, you can kind of see how the boat will react in reverse here. Now on a inboard, uh, again, same, same directional travel going forward, and we can see our thrust illustrated right here. But the difference now is our prop is not turning like it is on an outboard. Our, we have a fixed um, prop, and then the rudder is, is what's doing our steering. So as we go forward, all that water is, is pushing over the rudder, and that's what's giving us our steering uh, going forward. And, and the biggest thing, especially when you're coming in and out of the marina, is you want to just do little bursts. I, I don't want to go too fast. You kind of want to look out for other boats. I think the kind of slow and steady approach is good uh, while still maintaining control of the vessel. So if I'm coming in and out of gear, what I want is I want those bursts, you know, shooting over the rudder. So again, anticipating our turns a lot of times while I'm still in neutral, I'll get my turn set up and then go into gear. That way, when I go into gear, that burst of water is going directly over that rudder and I'm going right into my turn. If, if you go forward and then turn, you're kind of chewing up a lot of space. So if I can, if I can turn sooner, that's what we're kind of getting after here of, of that tight quarters. I might not have as much space to maneuver. So anticipating your turn, kind of knowing um, how that prop and rudder are working together is, uh, is key. Now the difference here in, in reverse on a inboard is the thrust now is going to be going, you know, basically towards the bow. It's not going over that rudder. So you will, you won't have the steerage in reverse like you maybe would on an outboard. Um, so as I back up, you, you will tend to notice a slight prop walk to port. Um, but uh, on all of our inboards, you do have bow and stern thrusters, so you can still maneuver. Uh, it's just a little bit different technique, but it's, it's important to know uh, if I'm trying to back out of a slip, I'm not going to be able to have that steerage. So it's good, again, to have that turn set up. So when I go forward, uh, again, I'm instantly going into that turn. I'm not chewing up a bunch of space and, and just kind of walking the boat backwards and using those thrusters uh, as well as I'm backing up. Um, so at the helm, we have our, our throttle position. Now this is going to be the same on a diesel versus an outboard, but um, in neutral, you're going to have a, a detent. So it's going to kind of, you know, click into neutral. You're going to have the same uh, detent into your forward idle and then your reverse idle. Coming in and out of the marina, um, you know, maybe pulling up to a mooring ball or, or an anchorage, you, you don't want to go too fast. Again, you're not going to stop once you come back to neutral. That momentum is going to carry on. So it's good to kind of come in and out of gear. But really, too, if I'm coming up to the dock, I shouldn't need more than those detents, that forward idle and, and reverse idle, because I'm not just going to come to a dead stop. And, you know, you want to make sure you're going in and out of gear, just doing little bursts. 
but but not going past those detents. If you have a lot of wind, a lot of current, you might need to, but in, in a typical docking scenario, I try to just stay in there, and that kind of keeps me out of trouble where I'm not coming too fast to the dock. Um, I'm kind of still maintaining control, but um, it, it, it'll just make it, I think, a lot less stressful for everyone on board um, as you're coming in and out, kind of like in that video, the, the guy was going a little too fast and forward, then he tries to compensate and go too fast in reverse. Um, so if you can try to stay just in and out of those detents, um, I think it'll make it and look a lot smoother. Um, and then you can also see your bow thruster controls here, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, as we go forward. So, you know, even just at the dock, if you're tied off, you're sitting there, you can kind of just get a feel. You don't have to have the, even the engine running. If you just want to get a feel for those, that throttle, you know, the, the stiffness, the, the clicking in and out of gear, you can kind of feel it lock in there. Um, it's perfectly okay to practice and just get a feel uh, before, you, uh, before you start. Now, on the, uh, on the thrusters, the, the biggest thing here is you do have a, an on button, like say on the, on the Lumar, on the, uh, the side power, you're gonna have a double on button, but both of these will have an indicator light on them to show that you do have power. The, the slower you're going, the more effective these thrusters will be. You can kind of see this is a bow thruster. You can see the tube. If we're going fast, you're not gonna get that water flow going through there. So the reason I try to keep just my left hand for the wheel and my right hand for the throttles and thrusters is I try to make myself come to neutral, adjust with the thrusters as I need, and then go back into gear. So the faster I go, the less effective these will be. And you just want to do, again, kind of little bursts as I'm using these. And same with the throttle. I don't want to do too much throttle. I also don't want to over thrust. So if I'm coming in and out, just doing the little bursts, um, you can kind of see as you're approaching the dock there. And on, you know, like on the uh, side powers, there is a slight delay that's built in. Um, so I don't want to thrust too, too fast towards the dock and then try to compensate and go back the other way. I just want to do those little bursts and, and use that momentum to bring me towards the dock. So nice and easy, just like the throttle. But if you can, if you can try to train yourself to you know, go to neutral, adjust with the thrusters, and then go back into gear, um, you'll have more of, a, more of a response out of those thrusters as you're using them. And then we have here too, so this would, this would be a, a, a boat with bow and stern thrusters. So we have our bow joystick, our stern joystick. The nice thing about these is um, it's intuitive. So whichever way I, I hit that joystick is the direction the bow or the stern is gonna go. Now, one thing, and, and, and anyone who's boated with bow and stern will realize that you're not gonna perfectly parallel away from the dock. That bow will go a lot faster and you have a lot less weight you're a little bit more aerodynamic up there um, so you do want to do these in in bursts as you're uh, as you're coming in and out but you know anything docking wise i know with other boats um you know people watching um you know it, you think there's some anxiety there but just have fun with it i always try to see how close i can get before i really need them but um you know they they are there so use them and um, I know some people call them cheaters, but you know, hey, it's just because they don't have them and they they can't use them. So they uh, they do take a lot of stress and anxiety out of docking, having them there as a backup. Now uh, at, at the helm, um, like we've been talking about, is it's good to try to leave that left hand just for for the wheel, um, and then the uh, your right hand for the throttle and thrusters. You having that knob makes a big difference, but then also too, if um, if you're counting in your head, it'll make it a lot easier to just kind of focus on the dock, focus on coming in and out. Um, I always like to have the window open, have the back door open. Um, you know, if you have the flip up window too, have that open. Just so you guys have you guys can have communication if there's someone else on board. Um, it's it's easy to to kind of come in too hot so again just coming to neutral um and then just making little adjustments is big and you know some people like to mark on their steering wheel center which 
you know, on our boats, because you can do up to five res revolutions, it, it doesn't really, um, you know, make sense. It's not really going to have an effect as far as, you know, marking center. But the other thing is if you have an autopilot. So when you have an autopilot, as you know, when you're, when you're cruising, the wheel doesn't move. That motor is what's moving the ram side to side for steerage. So depending on when you disengage, you know, you can't really mark anywhere for center. But, you know, in neutral, going hard over, counting two and a half turns back, uh, you'll be able to easily find your, your center position. And then also standing too. So I like to stand. It's a lot easier to look around, um, see what's behind me, see who's, who's moving around. Um, versus sitting, it's kind of tough. You're kind of, you, you're not as, as mobile um, when you're coming in and out. And, and as, as we're approaching um, or, or same, you know, as we're leaving, um, but really as we're coming into the dock, it's, it's okay to ask for help. I know a lot of marinas typically as you're handling them on the VHF, um, you know, they'll be giving you your slip assignment. So just, just ask, you know, I usually ask, okay, you, you're putting me in a slip, but is that going to be a bow and starboard tie? Is it a bow and port tie? Um, you know, I always like to know just so I can get fenders and lines ready, but then also, um, you know, a lot of them are very willing to come help you out and, and assist in getting you tied off. But you, you know, whoever's, as you're pulling up and approaching, um, who's ever at the helm should stay at the helm until those lines are secure. And, and then who also, you know, whoever's stepping off, um, you know, should be the one stepping off, getting the lines tied off. And, and then you guys can both adjust because you don't really have to, to pull up and park right where you're going to be. I mean, you can adjust with the lines as you need. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just good to know who's doing which role. Um, again, having windows open, having doors open um, will make it, make it a lot easier for communication. And, and I know a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of people use the headsets. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it, you know, you want to make it as smooth as possible coming in and out. And, uh, and that'll also reduce a lot of the stress, kind of knowing who's doing what role. Um, and, you know, for us, a lot of us boat with kids, a lot of people boat with pets. Um, it's good to kind of have them situated, um, especially out of the way, so you're not having to step over them or move over them as you're coming in and out. So, you know, for, for our girls, it's giving them a, a tablet and putting them up in the, uh, in the V-birth so they're kind of out of the way and, and not worried about them stepping off with you as you're getting secure. So that was kind of the first run of just basics. Is there, uh, do we have any questions right now? Yeah, there's, there's a couple for you, Kenny. The first one is uh, Barry for safe docking with the 20 mile an hour wind hitting the port side of the boat. He just wants to know, he's talking about an outboard, which he doesn't have anymore, but he wants to know uh, about what you would do to keep from getting blown off the dock. And I mean, my, my thing is, is anytime you're in a 20 mile an hour wind, you're going to have a challenge and I don't care what boat it's on, but talk to him about maybe using a little bit more uh, engine power you know, and getting the boat in the dock where, you know, we talk about forward idle and gear, which might not always work in the strong current or wind. For sure. Yeah. And I think, yeah, if, if you have ideal weather conditions, I mean, it, that's what we try to shoot for, but definitely you, you might have a lot of current, you might have a lot of wind. Um, and that's where asking the Marina, you know, if you're coming into a Marina, even if you have a permanent slip there, um, you know, they have dock staff and, and, you know, you can either, if they don't monitor a VHF, you know, just call them and let them know that you're coming in. I mean, they, they know the weather conditions too. So I've never had a Marina, you know, not help as we're coming in. So I think it's perfectly fine just to ask and, uh, and ask for that help. But I agree if, if it's 20 knots, um, yeah, you're going to have uh, some challenge coming in and, and probably going to have to, you know, maybe do a few different attempts to, to get lined up to where you want to be. Yeah. And, you know, you get, I get a few of them on here about, you know, using, you know, bow thrusters and things like that, like on an outboard, you know, you, you know, using the bow thruster pushes the stern away on an outboard. And one thing that, you know, I do all the time is, 
and I know you mentioned it, is watching, you know, on an outboard, you can see the position of your motor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, coming into a dock, if I'm going to, and you'll have more demonstrations coming up on kind of how we would do that. But, you know, using, he's, you know, they're saying, well, when I use the bow, bow thruster, it pushes the stern. Well, then I would have the engine pointed towards the dock and I would have it in reverse uh, to hold the stern over just even as I'm using the thruster, the bow thruster to act like I have bow and stern thrusters. Um, yeah. That's there, you know, and you can go through that more in, in the uh, demonstration <clears throat> coming up. But another one I think is good, Kenny, is, you know, how, how they should use uh, the thruster remote. And the thruster remote is, you know, to me, it's, it's valuable when I'm single handing. Right. And, and it's valuable on a diesel where um, you have a bow and a stern thruster. Because what I do is I'll pull into the dock, just like you'll go through on demonstrations, and then I'll use the thruster remote really to hold me against the dock as I'm tying up lines. So it works really well when you're single handing. Um, and just point out, because we get this call probably 10 times a week on leaving autopilots on. Barry thought we should note about putting an autopilot to standby. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's always, um, you know, on the autopilot display, you kind of have three, three readouts and you're going to have a standby, you're going to have a heading hold or a follow route. So the biggest thing is just having a glance and making sure that it, the autopilot display does say standby. Um, because yeah, you don't, you don't want to be fighting that autopilot as you're coming in and out, especially in the, uh, the close quarters, um, you know, maneuvering. So it is good just as you're approaching to make sure that that is in the off position. Yep. Um, and then there's just one, we'll, we'll keep it moving here, but, um, one that I see it's the, do trim tabs help with docking or leaving the dock? I've definitely never found that to be any, any help. And, and, you know, I've on our, on our newer ones, you know, they have the auto retract. Um, typically you're going to they'll as you key on and off the auto retract. But if I was to come in, if you were to put me on a boat and, in, and I didn't know where the tabs were, I, I don't think I would really know. I couldn't tell you based on how the boat was handling. Um, they really, there's not much throw to them. I mean, you have what, maybe five inches or so, six inches. There's, there's not a lot. The trim tabs are really more for your, your uh, cruising underway than they are for docking. But I've, I've never had a situation where I thought those were, you know, making it more challenging for me to get on and off the dock. And, and you can kind of elaborate on that too, if you have any other input. No, oh, I, I mean, trim tabs really to me are just designed to be at cruise, you know, it's yeah. designed to adjust the, the bow height and to offset the load. If you have four people on one side of the boat or one person on the other, you know, it's, it's really designed for speeds at, you know, 12 knots and above before trim tabs do anything. And I don't think they affect much of your fuel efficiency at cruising or they affect much at, you know, making docking, you know, harder. Yeah. Um, one just to go that I'll talk about and we'll get into current and some of those things, but you know, Mike wants to know about being able to, um, you know, what docking with current, he's an Everett, you know, and Everett is known yeah. to have current running through there. And what I find is, you know, always figuring out a way to go against the current when you're docking is going to give you way more control. And so even if I'm, I'm going down a fairway and the current's with me and I'm going to pull onto a starboard slip. I'm going to turn around and go against the current. Even in that fairway, I'll turn around and go against the current coming back into the dock. It just, it gives you a lot more control going against it than with it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. You're not, uh, you're not getting pushed further down the dock as you're trying to, trying to come in and tie off. Yep. All right, you good for now? Yeah, let's keep it mo moving. All right, awesome. All right, so again, kind of, you know, prepping um, for docking, again, making sure everyone, you know, kids, pets, everyone's secure. Um, it's good to have 
and, and kind of know how your, your balance turn lines um, are tied off, make sure that they're ready, um, have your fenders ready. Uh, and that's why a lot of time, if I'm not coming into my permanent mortgage and I'm going into a guest mortgage, um, I, I do always ask, you know, what is that going to, you know, what my position is going to be? Is it bow in port, bow in starboard? Um, if it's a linear dock, it's always nice to know how much space you have in between the boats. Um, windows open, doors open um, will always help uh, just communicate between everyone. And um, it's, uh, it's good too to i've seen this so many times where you know i see someone come up to the dock they get to the dock you know someone steps off with the line and then the motor gets shut off so you my thing is i i don't want to turn the motor off i still want to have that control of the boat i still want my thrusters on um you know in case you have that gust of wind in case you have more current than you anticipated to me having someone stay at the helm while another person is tying off is more helpful than you trying to come back and, uh, and tie off the boat with them. Um, at the helm, I, I still have control of the boat. I can go forward, I can go back. You know, with the thrusters, I can keep the, the boat against the dock. So my thing, and again, talking about not having the boat right where we're gonna tie off, but just getting to the dock. Once you get that balanced stern line tied, then you can adjust. You can get a spring line, you can move it forward, you can move it back. But the biggest thing is just getting the boat there, getting it secure, and, and then you can adjust from there. But yeah, the, you, really, you really don't want that person at the helm to leave the helm until you have those lines secure. And that's just more so you have control of the boat, um, you know, and, and it's not drifting away at you. It, you know, all of our boats, we supply a, a boat hook as well. So, you know, having that out and ready, you know, just even having it sitting in the cockpit uh, in case you need it, it's versus having to go into a hatch or having to go maybe into the midship berth to grab it, just having that stuff out and ready. Um, you, you probably won't need it. I mean, there's, there's, you know, if you had that 20 knot wind, like Barry's talking about, you might need it, it might help, but just having it out and ready um, will be will be more helpful too, and and less stressful as you're scrambling trying to find it as you're as you're coming in or even leaving. So, I think the biggest thing we're just trying to reiterate is having everything prepped and ready to go as as you're coming and going. So, this is uh, this is our docking scenario here. So we're coming into the marina. Um, you you want to know where you're going to be. So if, if I'm coming in, I'm a bow in, starboard tie. Okay, let's get our line set up. Let's, let's make sure our fenders are ready. Um, and, and that way we're not trying to do it last minute as we come in. And, and really too, once I'm in your shot of the marina and I'm talking to them on the VHF, I'll get all my fenders prepped, get all my lines prepped before I start coming down that fairway because I don't want to get close and, and be in a situation where I'm, I'm pulling into the dock, but my lines and my fenders aren't set yet. So either outside the breakwater, or a lot of times as you come in the breakwater, you'll have a bigger area to kind of have that stuff prepped. That's a good, good time to get everything set up. But what we're gonna have in these, we have a few different uh, illustrations um, that are gonna show us pulling up to the dock. And this is gonna be, you know, probably one of the more challenging ones you'll face as you're say coming from the right hand side. And if we're doing a bow in starboard tie, because you're gonna have all that momentum still pushing you down the fairway. So like Andrew was talking about with current, if we have the current pushing us too, it's not doing us any favors. So a lot of times we try to drive into that current, into that wind as we dock. So here, if, if we're looking at a scenario, we're, we're coming into the marina, you know, all that momentum is, is carrying us down the fairway. And that's why you don't want to go too fast. You want to come in and out of gear, do little, little bursts, um, and again, anticipate your turns as we come in. So right now, if we were doing, say, a bow in starboard tie, you know, that momentum is going to keep us pushing into that dock and that, that other boat here. So what I try to do is, you know, outside of the actual dock itself, I'll, I'll set up my turn out here and, and let that stern kind of overshoot a little bit. So that way I'm driving at the dock, I'm pulling in, I'm using my momentum to, to push me towards the dock here. It would almost be as if we were coming in from the left side and driving right into that, that slip. So you're using that momentum 
to, to push you towards the dock. So these are, this would be a little more challenging only for the fact of it's your momentum is going to carry you, which is fine. You just have to anticipate, you know, a little bit further out here, kind of knowing where your pivot point is on the boat um, and getting the turn set up. So it's pushing you towards the dock. And, and really that's, that's, I think key to, to have the momentum working in your favor, coming in and out of gear, doing little bursts with the thruster as you need, and and then having you know one person step off and then you know kind of start to tie off your uh, your lines there. And then in and that would be in a uh, in an actual slip. If we were on say a, a linear dock and and pulling in, you know we would want to kind of have an angled approach. Same principle if there was another dock here, but we're just gonna have more of an angled approach. We're gonna drive in, our wheel's gonna be to the left. As we get closer, um, that's where we're gonna come to neutral. We're gonna steer all the way to the right with the wheel for an outboard and then do a little you know, bump in reverse to kind of bring that stern around. So the biggest thing is to just, again, in and out of gear, anticipate your turn as you're coming in, count those turns in your head. And, and then also, again, just have fun. This is pleasure boating. We're having fun, we're all having fun. So it, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a nerve wracking experience, uh, you know, coming and going. And, you know, if you, if you wanna practice, especially midweek when it's not as busy, you know, that's a good time to just do a, a handful of touch and goes and, and make sure you're comfortable uh, and everyone kind of has their, uh, their, their roles and they know what they're doing. But as I'm coming and going, like we have, um, you know, a, a burgee flag here. It's, um, I always like to use that as a reference point just to see how my bow is moving. Um, it's kind of helping me in contrast with what's in front of that, see how I'm moving, how the bow is moving, how fast it's moving. And then what I need to compensate with, with maybe the thruster or the motor here as I'm pulling into the dock. Now, if we had wind, like say the wind was pushing us off of the dock, um, that's where, you know, you might have to have a little bit more momentum coming in, but then the bow thruster again to help push that bow towards the dock. Now, in this circumstance, if we were coming in and the wind was pushing us off, I'd probably want to do that, that stern line, um, get that tied, and then I can keep whoever is at the helm, keep the bow against the dock with that bow thruster, and then you can go up and get that bow line. So then once you have those lines secure, both of you can step off, you can move the boat forward, you can move the boat back if you need. Um, if you wanna do a spring line, uh, that would also be a good time. But I think the biggest thing is, is just making sure you have that balanced stern line secure before you know, everyone steps off. Cause you, you don't wanna both step off and then there goes the bow and, uh, and then you have a bigger uh, situation than you really need to, need to worry about. And big one we see too is, is fenders and, and how we're tying off with, uh, you, you know, you're tying off your cleats. You know, this wouldn't be the, the best example on the line side here, but this is what we're gonna illustrate on the fenders. If you have a whole bunch of figure eights on the, on the cleat there, it's gonna take you that much longer to untie and it's gonna take you that much longer to tie off. So we're gonna show you how to tie off to a, to a cleat here in a second, but for right now, um, if we're tying off our fenders, the biggest thing to know is just your dock height. If we have a lower dock like we um, have illustrated here in Des Moines, you know, we have that fender all the way down touching the water. And the biggest thing is I don't want with wave action or, or you know, the boat just moving that fender to, to wiggle up and, and pop out where it, then I see it resting on the dock if it, would, if it was too high. So I want to have it as low as possible in this situation and that'll give me as much protection on the boat side. And then when we tie it off, we'll, you know, I always like to use the rails and in that way it keeps my cleats open for the lines. So we have our stern uh, fender on right here. The bow you can see is at the low side. It's at the bottom of the railing. Um, that's another thing too, is if you're tying off, um, you know, to the railing for the fenders, just make sure it's at the base. Um, that way you don't have a bunch of torque on the, uh, on the railing, but then also it's easier to get to, it's easier to untie uh, when you need. But the nice thing about the this knot is it's easy to adjust, bring the fenders up or down. Uh, if you had a higher dock, you might have to bring these up. It just makes it easier 
to, to adjust those as you come in. So here you can see a, an illustration of, um, of our knot we were utilizing. Now, I know they make a bunch of different, um, you know, clips and stuff and uh, attachments for the, for the fenders, which is, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But if, if you were just tying off to a, to a railing here, this is, a, you know, typically a knot we like to use just, just for ease of adjusting more than anything. You know, if I have to raise them, if I have to lower them, it makes it really easy to loosen that knot, let some line out um, or loosen it as well, and then bring, bring some line in so I can raise that fender. Now here, here we have a boat that is tied off at the slip. And this is the biggest thing I think that, uh, that can be a challenge of, we're on a, a big linear dock and you, you know the cleats are going to be spaced out in such a way that might not be the easiest to tie off so you know you do have three lines we can do a bow a stern and then a spring line if we need it so here we kind of did a spring line almost with the bow and the stern um you know we didn't have a cleat we could use in the middle that one i think was broken so you know you come up to the dock we're just trying to keep it secure and uh and not have it drift away i think one thing too is you don't have to reef the boat super tight to the dock. You can have some slack. You want some play, but just not too much. So here you can see, I mean, the fender's not even touching the boat. It, that's giving us a little bit of slack in there um, while it's still tight enough to easily step on and off. But yeah, typically we'll have our, our stern line, our bow line coming to the dock, and then somewhere in the middle, you know, have a spring line attached because uh, that, that'll make it easier too as you're untying in different uh, kind of weather conditions coming and going from the dock. And when we tie off, um, this is a uh, illustration we got online, but um, you, you can kind of see a, if, if this was our boat over here tying off, how you'd want to you know, wrap the line around the cleat, do your figure eights, and then kind of lock it in with that, uh, that last uh, kind of tail end of the line to the cleat. So you can see you don't have to do a whole bunch of figure eights because it's just going to make it that much harder when you're leaving. If I have to untie this thing, you know, eight or nine times before I can get the line undone, it's, it's going to be a hassle. So, you know, you don't, you don't need to use the entire length of the, of the, uh, of the line when tying off, just get it snug. Um, do a couple figure eights and then lock that side in and you'll be in good shape. And we have super serious Ivan right here. So when we get underway, I know on the fenders, we like to just kick the fenders inside the cockpit, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll also kick the ones up forward kind of into the walkway there. But one thing we found too, just without having any extra hardware or attachments is, you know, we like to make a, a nice coil, a nice even coil with the dock lines here. And then as we bring it back, we're gonna hold that loop up against the railing. And then the bottom side is gonna come up and through the middle. And then you're just gonna pull that middle side tight. And what that does for us is it has a nice secure loop you know, I can see the line as I'm underway, so I can kind of monitor and make sure nothing, you know, came free. Uh, you know, you're not tossing the, the line just up on the bow where it's not secure. Um, but the other thing, too, is I can then get it when I come into the dock. You know, I have something to, to grab onto, um, and then I can also just untie it by grabbing the middle portion and then pulling out, pulling that line out. So, you know, our biggest thing is I want to make sure my lines are secure underway, but then I also want an easy way to, to get to them and tie off my boat when I come in. So being able to have them secure, you know, grabbing that middle portion and just pulling it, and then I have everything right in my hand, I can then tie off to the cleat on the dock. So it, to me, that's what, that's what makes it a, a lot easier. And, and especially if everyone knows how all the lines are tied, how all the cleats are tied, um, it, it'll make it that much easier as you're coming and going. Now, before, uh, again, before we, uh, we depart or are or, or getting, uh, you know, getting underway, it's, um, you know, you, you don't want to jump. The, the biggest thing, too, is as I'm coming up to the dock, um, you know, 
a lot of our boats have bow and stern thrusters with the outboards. You can use that outboard like a stern thruster and you still have a bow. Um, I never want anyone to, to have to jump off. They should be able to step off. So as I'm approaching, I want to be able to get close enough where that can happen. If I can't, and maybe I have to back up and reset or go out, spin around, try again, you know, that's okay. The, the, the worst thing you could do is have a situation where you're trying to come into the dock, someone jumps, they don't make it, now they're in the water. Now you have a, a man overboard situation on top of trying to dock and, and who knows where the lines are, what's going on. So you know, the biggest thing is, 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 you know, if you have the headsets with the door open, like you can see here, windows open, you can, you can utilize that and talk to each other. But then also, especially doing a starboard tie like this, you know, stick your head out the window. I mean, it's easy just to stick out, look back, um, kind of see how close you're getting because, you know, you are so far forward on the boat. You know, you have a lot of boat behind you that you don't want to forget about. So as I'm coming up to the dock, it's good to have my head on a swivel um, and just kind of see how that stern is because, you know, you can step right off here and, uh, and not have any, anyone having to jump. You really shouldn't have to jump to get to the dock. And then, yeah, like we say here, practice makes perfect. Um, you, you just, you want to get out there and do it. You want to make sure that, you know, you're comfortable, you know how your boat, uh, boat reacts, especially in different, uh, you know, weather situations, current situations, wind. Um, and, and the biggest thing is just, just taking your time, ha again, having fun with it. Uh, it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have to be that stressful. I know at times it definitely can, um, especially when you have a crowd start to gather. But, you know, the more, the more you practice here, the more you get familiar with your boat, um, it, you know, the more confident you're going to be, the more you're going to know what's going to happen if you do have wind, you do have current, um, if it, uh, if it comes up on you. But it, uh, it, it should be something that is, is not as stressful as, uh, as it's made out to be. All right, we got any uh, questions there, Drew Drew? Little uh, technical difficulty trying to get off, uh, <laughs> off mute. Um, let's see, it looks like most, um, yeah, it looks like most are just uh, maybe suggesting some, some things on what they've, what they've learned. I saw one about, you know, is it okay to use the, uh, the cleat on the swim step you know, to secure the boat to the dock. And, and my answer really is, you know, I, I use that cleat quite a bit, um, but I, I use it really just to pull the boat in a little bit closer sometimes, but it should not be my main securing point for the stern um, of the boat. You know, we really put those cleats on there for, for dinghies, you know, when people come up and they want to tie off a dinghy to the back of the boat and that type of thing. Um, yeah, and with that too, you know, you like the cleats on the boat are typically so much higher than the dock. The thing I always worry about is if you use that stern cleat, it's usually lower and you're coming up. So I don't want to have that that cleat on the boat being lower than the dock side. So if I'm stepping on and off, uh, you know, you're putting a lot of added stress on that cleat if if it's if it's trying to hold the boat up as you're coming on and off. So like you said, using it more just to keep you close than then a main tie-off point is, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't use that for my main, you know, stern tie-off point. Yep. And I, this is a good one uh, from Neil. Uh, if you're by yourself, how do you secure the forward fender? And, you know, most, I know in your earlier, you know, where you don't use the cleats to hang a fender. I, I do use the cleats to hang a fender and that's one of the areas. If I'm boating by myself, I'll reach right out of the window, you know, usually on the starboard side, if that's the dock and we put a cleat right there. So you could at least have a fender quickly, you know, tied off on that cleat on the front and then to get on the dock. And so many people that I see, they're worried about, you know, what their fenders look like when they're cruising. And I always tell everybody, I, you know, I've never worried about what my fenders look like. I go for convenience over style. 
And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't leave my fenders down maybe every once in a while. Um, but you know, I use the most convenient place and I actually just tip the fenders up on the, you know, the walkway or the side trail of the boat and then flip them up in the cockpit rather than untying all of them and putting them away where I have to go and retie them all every time I come into a dock. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think, especially if you are single handy and having, you know, you have four fenders. So having them outside the say passenger window, the helm window, and then having the ones already tied off and, and especially the height set up in the stern will make it a lot easier if you are single handing and coming in, because again, just outside that breakwater, it's just kind of outside the, the moorage. It's easy to reach out the windows, kick the fenders over and then go in the back and kick them over too. So um yeah i'm i'm with you there just is as easy as i can make it um i'm all for yep and here's one from charlie um when you're pulling into like a big marina like Polsbo, if if there are a bunch of slips that are open and you're going into guest moorage you know is it better to take a slip closest to the shore to avoid wind and i'll let you answer that i i know what i would do and that's using the wind to my favor, regardless of what slip it is. But go ahead and maybe you can touch on that a little bit. Yeah, and, and I don't know. I mean, the, there's so many, you know, different marinas and they have different conditions. I know Edmonds, you, you tend to get a lot of current. And I, I don't think necessarily being closer is always better um, as far as wind goes. But um, like, you know, like you're saying, use it to your advantage. But again, ask the marina you know if you're coming in and it's windy and they're putting you somewhere um you know don't be afraid to ask for that dock help and just say hey okay can you have someone meet me at the dock um and and tie off but i, I don't think necessarily every single time the the closer in you are the less wind or current you're going to have but if I'm coming in, I do like to look at, say, the, the flagpole at the marina or try to find um, some kind of point of reference to just to see how the wind is blowing and in what direction. You know, if that flag up at the marina is standing straight up, I know it's probably pretty good wind or breezy, but, um, you know, and then I'll also know the direction of it too. Yeah, and this is a, this is a one that we've got a couple questions, like when the, when the wind's keeping you on the dock, you know, you're trying to leave and yeah. you're on a, a linear dock, you know, how do you keep the stern from hitting the dock? And I, I'll tell you exactly what I do. And what I do is on a, on a diesel or even an outboard, naturally on a diesel or an inboard, when you put it in reverse, the boat's going to walk to the port side. And so yeah. if I'm a starboard tie on a linear dock, I'm going to get my stern away from the dock first. I'm going to give it a good shove on the stern and I'm going to hit reverse and naturally bring that stern out because the bow thruster is going to do more than the stern thruster at that point. Right. So that that's usually what I'll do is get my stern out as far away as I can and then make my turn or decide, you know, whether I'm using my thruster or however else, unless you have other things you do, but, Sometimes when the wind's really blowing, you got to get creative with lines and, you know, be able to get on and off the dock. But most of the time I can get off even, even if I'm single handing in a, in a strong wind. Yeah. And I think too, like you're saying, getting that stern away, but then also, you know, don't, don't be afraid to continue to back up and maybe take some of that, that open space that's still behind you because, you know, same kind of thing. Okay, you get the stern off, then everyone, you kind of want to naturally go forward. Well, then that's going to kick that stern right back towards the dock. So a lot of times, you know, maybe, can you see my cursor here? Uh, I have the text chat. Uh, sorry. So yeah, like if, if we were pulling away here, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, pull further back into this open area. That'll just give you more room to steer and swing. And, and not worry about hitting these other boats. So, you know, keeping and continuing to back up necessarily isn't a bad thing at all. You're, you're taking and utilizing that space that's out there. And then at that point, you can, you can do your turn or thruster and do your turn as you need to. Yep. Okay. Um, did we cover how to, um, do we, do we cover how to, secure a boat to a mooring buoy. I thought we did that in one of our other online webinars. 
I don't think we did a mooring buoy or, or really anchoring yet. We talked a little bit about it, but I don't know if we ever did a uh, an actual slide or anything on it. Yeah, there's a lot of online things that you can look at. I even, for the first time, I, you know, went to a mooring buoy. Jeff might be able to answer this. He's probably done more of those in his boating. But what I actually do is I, I when I pull up to a mooring buoy, I'll, of course, get a hold of the, the top ring on the buoy. But I have run it through my uh, anchor roller. And I run the line right up through the anchor roller and snug it up tight and it keeps that kind of right under the bow of the boat as you swing. But, uh, and I found that worked pretty good, um, you know, doing it. But, you know, a lot of the time I know people use a different way. How do you normally secure to a mooring buoy, Jeff? I go off the, uh, the bow eye and uh, just use a quick snap uh, ring onto the uh, mooring buoy. And I do a long enough line that I can pull up next to it and right from the cockpit of the boat just snap and unsnap it from there so that okay. works out pretty well and i've seen yeah bringing that up i've seen people use that where they actually have kind of clips on both ends where they'll do a clip on the bow eye and a clip on the other end that they can keep it on the boat even when they're cruising if they do a lot of you know yeah, tying up to buoys if i'm uh you know there there were years where i worked just off of a buoy so i just left it right on there tied it off to a cleat or or use the snap ring onto a cleat and then it was ready to go. So that's a good way to do it. But I prefer the bow eye. Okay. Oh, that's good. And uh, uh, Dave, Dave asks if the, uh, he asked if the uh, IPS have prop walk and IPS are just, they're, they're just not even fair. Um, yeah, we're not talking about them in the docking right now. No, there's uh, yeah, wind, current, all it doesn't even matter. So we'll we'll cover that one with you, Dave. It's uh, it's pretty darn easy. Yeah, all right, let's keep it rolling, Kenny. All right, sounds good. So leaving the dock, um, you know, getting ready to get underway. We're not going to get you know dive too much into like a, a pre-departure checklist, but you know. One thing, while I'm still secure, tied off at the dock, um, as I'm doing my pre-departure, I always like to check fluids, um, check my oil. In this situation, we have a diesel, so just check coolant, check oil, uh, make sure your seacock's open, check your strainer. And a lot of times what I like to do is, even while that hatch is still open, um, fire up the engine. And, and the biggest thing is I want to make sure I have good water flow, uh, and this is where the strainer is on this uh, Volvo Penta, but make sure I have good water flow. It, it's always good to check that stuff um, while you're still secure versus finding out, you know, five minutes down the road that uh, that maybe, you know, may, for whatever reason, the seacock wasn't open or, um, you know, your oil level, you know, wasn't right or, or the dipstick wasn't all the way in. So it's good to do those pre-departure checks while you're still secure at the dock. Um, you know, make sure all the battery switches are on. You know, we have our house, our engine. Um, we'd also want to make sure our... our um, uh, thruster switches are on as well if you have two switches or if you have one switch but you know do all this stuff before you start untying um, and when I run it's good just to have a quick check make sure all my batteries are charging um, and then again making sure kids pets all of that are secure it's it, it can be a little little nerve-wracking um, if, if dogs are barking or running around and kids are doing the same thing so it, it'll take that much more stress out of the situation if you can uh, if you can have all that stuff secure before you, you pull away from the dock. So once we do our checks, motors fired up, we have all of our electronics on. Uh, you know now we're going to start untying. So one question we get a ton is it, it doesn't matter how or, or or which line I'm untying first, and and it really does. So you know, wind and current can play a factor as, as you're coming and going from the dock. So as we're leaving for this example, if we had um, a lot of wind or wind pushing us from the stern, I wouldn't want to untie this line first because that's what's really anchoring us. That's holding us from going you know, further down. What I would want to do in this circumstance is really start from the bow and then work my way back, having that stern line really hold me in place. Uh, if you can have someone at the helm, if there's two of you or multiple multiple people, um, it's nice because again, motor's running, 
Um, thrusters are on, they'll have control, they can kind of keep the boat in position. But if I'm by myself and I'm leaving in this situation, uh, I would want to do that stern line last as the wind's pushing me, um, you know, from the stern going forward. Now, if I had wind coming from the bow, um, same kind of thing. I, I wouldn't want to undo that bow line first. So I would, uh, I would want to probably start from the stern or, or maybe even if I had a spring line in here, um, get that stern line untied, um, you know, maybe do the spring and, and then really the bow. But I think that the biggest thing is again, have a look around, see what, you know, the wind's doing, kind of note if you have any, any current as well, because that'll also affect as you're untying. But the biggest thing is, is making sure engine's running, you know, all my electronics are on. I'm, I'm basically ready to get underway because I don't want to not have stuff on and then I pull away from the dock and then I realize, you know, for whatever reason I can't, my, my plotter's taking longer to turn on, my VHF isn't on, my autopilot's not on. Just have all that stuff already turned on before you start untying. It'll just help you guys a lot, I think, going going forward but it is good to note both as you're coming and going um you know which line to tie off as you're coming in kind of based on those weather weather conditions and then and then getting everything secure um like andrew was talking about too earlier of of having fenders secure you can see we have a couple fenders on the back uh, um, port side here so if i'm not utilizing them they're still ready um i i can still grab them if i need if, if I'm coming in, the, the biggest thing, and, and Jeff and I were talking about this too, is you're really not going to manhandle these boats um, too much uh, as far as fending them off. So, you know, we always like to have a fender ready maybe that's, that's uh, in the cockpit or something just to, just to put between you, um, you and the dock or you and another boat because, you know, putting yourself in between you and the dock or, in a boat, or another boat necessarily isn't the safest thing, but that fender will, will help protect, you know, your boat versus the dock or another boat as you're coming in and out. You can just kind of drop it down. It's easy to adjust, bring it up and down by hand if you need to. So having those ready I think is key. And, and then also, uh, like Andrew is noting, just flip them inside like we have here before you get underway. And then when you come at, uh, come into the dock, it's easy just to kick them overboard. They're already at the right height, um, you know, from leaving earlier. And, uh, and you don't have to do a ton of adjustment as you're coming in and out. But, you know, when we're underway, I always like to do a double check, make sure I have all my fenders in, make sure all of my lines are secure, especially with the dinghy. I've one of the times I broke a shear pin was there was a, a line on the dinghy here that had come loose and was in the water. So then I go to operate the thruster and, and then that line got into the stern thruster. So it's always important to kind of note, make sure my dinghy's up, it's secure. And, and we always like to take the, uh, the oars off, um, you know, have anything else that's stowed in here secure where it's just not going to come free on you as you're coming and going. So it's, it's just good to have that double check, you know, kind of look up the starboard side, look up the, the port side, make sure everything is, is in and stowed as you're getting underway. And this is a, this is a big one. So, so your, your boat speed, um, all of our boats at different speeds or say at the same speed, throw a different size wake. So, you know, it, a lot, anytime you're coming in and out of the marina, you really want to do a no wake. Um, they will sometimes have a, a speed limit posted, but that's, that's really a, it, that is really there for if, if you can go five knots and not throw away, great, but don't go past or don't go faster than, than five. Um, if I'm coming in and out, I'm, I'm going to just bump in and out of gear. But the biggest thing is look behind you. Um, you know, it might seem like you're going really slow and, and everything's fine, but you could have a monster wake, especially um, depending on the boat and the speed. So the, the best thing I always do if, is I'm entering that no wake zone and I'm throttling back is I, I'm, you know, turning around and I'm looking behind you. So a lot of times what they will consider a wake is, is that V behind the boat, that water coming off the boat. You really don't want to have any of that V coming behind you. That would be an indication of, of a wake. But you know, the other thing I had another customer kind of note this to me is if I'm on my boat tied off, I shouldn't 
feel or know other boats are going by me. I don't want to feel that rocking of, of the wake from that boat passing me. Um, especially if I'm trying to cook or grill or, you know, it, you know, my kids are hanging out in the back and someone goes by real fast and throws a wake and, um, you know, they're, uh, they're running back and forth, but it's, it's just, it, the biggest thing is it's more of a courtesy to other boaters. And I, and I think it's, important to look behind because that's really going to be an indication of how much wake you're throwing not necessarily just the speed the speed's there to make sure you're going slow um but the uh, the no wake is really the no wake and it and it's important to look behind you to see what you're throwing for a wake now as we're uh, as we're um in the marina say we were we were departing um, or really even coming in but you know i, I want to take as much space as i have if, if I'm coming down a fairway here and there's no other boats, I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to take as much space as, as what's there. And if I'm coming and there's other boats, say, docked on either side here, I, I want to make sure I'm in the middle so, so they see me. Because as you're coming and going, um, you know, you want to make sure you're looking around for other vessels. As I untie the boat and we're getting underway, um, before I really pull out, I want to make sure no one else is doing the same thing. Because I don't want to, you know, have a have a you know accident or crash or, um, you know, screw someone else up because I was I was coming out and they were doing the same thing. So it's important just to look before you're coming out. But then I think being in the middle, especially if you have uh, you know good weather conditions, will will help other boaters and will also help you giving you enough space as you're coming out and uh, and maneuvering out of the marina. So if we do have a situation kind of coming out of the same, same area where we have, you know, say wind or current pushing us, I usually like to stay to that high side or, or, or that, you know, the closer to the wind there, just because we're going to be going a little slower. Again, no wake speeds, but I still want to maintain control. So if I'm coming back to neutral, say, I'm going to have more space here that I'm not going to be drifting into other boats or, or the dock for that matter. So it's good to, again, note the, the weather conditions, the wind, the current, and maybe, maybe cheat a little bit to that high side of wind or current just so you have uh, more control of the boat and more space to turn and, and maneuver out of the marina. So you just don't want to have to fight that or, or get into a situation where you're getting too close on this side. So this would be, you know, if we were too close or if we had the wind or current pushing us onto the dock, again, you know, all of our boats were so far forward, you, you, you can tend to forget how much boat is really behind you. And that's why I like to be standing so you can, again, look behind, see how much space you have. But I, I don't want to make that turn and then push the, the stern of the boat into the dock. So being in the middle as we're coming out of the marina will give us more space to turn. And if you're in a tight marina, um, you might have to do that in and out of gear with the throttle, um, you know, maybe come to neutral, do some, do a little bit of thruster to make that turn if it is really tight. But the biggest thing um, as I'm coming and going is I just don't want to swing into other boats. And that's where the momentum is, is really coming into factor and, and realizing where that pivot point is as we're coming out because we don't want to, we just don't want to hit anything. And then too, it's, it's good to know um, the tides and, and the depth. Uh, I think in, in any marina around here, once you're in the marina, you're, it's fairly certain you're in, you're in safe, you know, deep enough water, but coming in and out sometimes can be narrow and you wanna be able to account for other boats too. So this is a picture at Cap Sani, um, you know, we're boats heading out right here, but you can see we have our channel marker um, and you have one up here too. So if you're not familiar but the 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 three r's the red right return so if we're if we're returning from c we want the red marker on the right side of us so in this situation we're going out but it it is good to know the the water depth a lot of times especially in the northwest because we'll have a you know 12 foot tidal swing in the day um you might not have anywhere else to go but that channel so you want to make sure that you're giving other boats enough space you know, especially on the breakwater here, I don't want to cut that too close. I want to take that space, make a nice big wide turn. So if someone else is coming in, um, you know, they're not kind of blindsided by me or I'm not blindsided by them uh, being real close to that breakwater. 
So it's good just to give yourself um, enough of a berth, enough, enough space to, to safely navigate out. Um, and, and I always tell everyone, cause it, you know, some people like to cheat it. Oh, I know it's deep enough. Let's, let's, we can cheat. We don't have to go all the way to the end. Um, I've never really been a fan of that. I, I want to go all the way out to the end of the channel and then get underway only because, you know, those markers are there for a reason. And I don't want to be that boater that, you know, might be high and dry because they tried to cheat it and they thought they had enough water. Um, that's, uh, I would rather just go all the way out and, and know and not have to worry about uh, getting into too shallow of an area as we're coming in and out of the marina. So it's good to stay in those channels and note where those channel markers are as you're coming in and out. And, you know, here we have um, a picture. You can see we're, we're at the helm. Um, standing will give you the best view of other boats. And, and you want to keep in mind some of those reference points as you're coming in. As we noted before, you know, maybe watching the flag up at the marina, um, you know, again, watching the burgee and, and also watching that bow is kind of your pivot point just to see how the boat's maneuvering as, as you're waiting for the dock. Now, uh, with the, like we were talking about with the, uh, the IPS drives, that's, that's a little unfair. You guys can kind of cheat a little bit, but um, for the rest of them, you kind of, again, little burst in and out of gear. Um, everyone, you know, here's the fuel dock here in Des Moines. Everyone's kind of coming and going. So the biggest thing is just to be patient. Um, you know, everyone's kind of in this together and you just don't want to rush it. So make sure that you're going slow. Um, you know, everyone kind of knows what they're doing as they're approaching, but um, it can be a little, little challenging when there's a, a big crowd of boats and everyone's waiting to get fuel. So, you know, it's, it's best just to try to give yourself as much space as possible uh, as everyone's kind of shifting around in, in that marina there. But I think the biggest thing on, on all of this is just to be patient, but, you know, also just to have fun with it while you're out there. I think that was our last one too, but any other, uh, any other questions we have? Um, let's see. Uh, looks like Oh, yeah, that one for uh, no wake speed. Use your uh, speed control enunciator, which would be your admiral shouting slow down. Yeah, that's a good one, especially if you have the headsets. Just <laughs> no, there's no confusion there. Yep. And uh, Cynthia wants to know what an IPS drive is, Kenny. <laughs> Does she? Yeah. We can we can take her out for a for a demo. It's just yeah. a drive that's on the uh, on the forty one. Is that, that's a, all you're gonna that's all you're gonna give or forward forward, forward facing drive. you basically hit a button and it'll just hold you right there with uh with the two motors they kind of pivot thrust in and out of gear but they'll hold you right in position uh they have a, it's called dps dynamic positioning system and you can basically just hit a button and it and it keeps you right in that spot facing the same way so that's that's why we're not really talking about the uh the 41 because it has a single joystick to do everything. So you go forward, back, side, side, and then you can twist it to just maneuver the boat. She She's out. She said they're not buying a bigger boat, Kenny. <laughs> nice try. She yeah. says. <laughs> might might uh, as well um, go for a ride. It's not going to hurt anything. This, this, <laughs> will, this is saved. It will be posted on YouTube and everybody will be sent a link uh, for where it's located. So that was a question Bob had there. Yep, exactly. I think. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, if people, uh, it's a good one. Tom says if people offer help at the dock, accept it. Do the same for other boaters. Yeah, I've seen that a lot too, especially not even not even asking. But I, I think as boaters, we've all had those those docking situations where it's, there's a lot of wind, there's current. Um, you know, there's multiple times where I've pulled up to a dock and there's two or three people who have come, stepped off their boats, just not even doing lines, but just holding the boat, you know, just there to help because we, we've all been there and, and it is very nice to, to just have that hand while, while, while you're coming in. 
for sure. And Sean said protocol for tipping dock hands. Usually I ask for a couple hundred bucks um, if I help people get on the dock, but Small, I unmarked bills. <laughs> I, I've never seen uh well, I guess, you know, if you go into big marinas or things like that, people, you know, might throw them if they're staff, but usually if it's a, uh, if it's just another, another boater out there, I've never seen any tipping going on for helping out. Yeah. Now maybe a beverage or two exchange, but that's about it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe this one for Jeff, do you, do you have a recommendation on the type of line to use Jeff? There seems like there's a lot of different, you know, styles out there. And I know that you set up a specific brand that we use on our boats. Is this for the buoy? No, this is just a uh, dock lines. Okay. No, well, I mean, I don't even know what are the dock lines we have made of. <laughs> <laughs> I got a loop in them and, and uh, they don't stretch. <laughs> no. don't we, we, um, we use dock lines that are made by top knot. Yeah. But, um, and I don't, I don't know that they're, they seem to be a little bit softer um, than some of the other ones that you get at West Marine. But uh, I, I mean, as what I've always said is as long as the line diameter is strong enough to hold you know the style or weight of your boat i don't it doesn't matter to me uh what type of dock line you use yeah i do use on the uh, buoy line i use kevlar do you just from a strength standpoint okay and it gets sometimes if you're in in uh, rough weather it can pull on that so i just want to make sure that's strong but i i might be overdoing it too all right Okay. Well, nice job, Kenny. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Informative. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see uh, everyone out on the water. All right. Thanks everybody. See you soon guys. All right. Take care. Bye.